Next, I'd like to welcome Nagendra Prasad Nonovakre Anatharamia, who is a seasoned technology consultant with nearly 30 years of experience and development and testing. He has led product development in embedded systems for mobile devices in vehicle infotainment, ADAS and cellular-based stations. With over 11 years in automotive testing, he has served Global Tier 1 OEMS and is a sk skilled in BMV activities. He holds a USPTO patent for his test automation in embedded services and has three pending IoT patents. In September 2023, he was recognized at the UK Parliament for his contributions in technology and innovation as part of the G20 initiative. Nagendra Prasad Nonovakre Anatharamia will present on artificial intelligence driving the future of the automotive industry. Good afternoon, everybody. So since morning, we've been talking a lot about artificial intelligence. So I thought uh, I'll touch upon what exactly is artificial intelligence when it comes to automotive world. Uh, as uh, the uh, MC was talking about, my primary experience in the last 11 years has been in the automotive industry. In the automotive industry, we call it as uh, tier one and OEMs in this ecosystem. Tier ones are these electronic manufacturers like the Bosch, Panasonic, Herman, and the OEMs are your uh, Teslas, uh, Fords, uh, then Porsche, all these are the OEMs. So I'll talk about what exactly is the artificial intelligence and uh, in automotive. Uh, I'll just give a quick overview of what an infotainment system is. Infotainment is a portmanteau word, which means that it's information and entertainment. Earlier, if you just look at it, long back in 1930s, 40s, 50s, we just had a tuner. Tuner means it's a radio receiver where you could listen to the music and let it change so much. Today, it has evolved so much that all of you must be aware about the uh, uh, CarPlay and Android Auto, where your phone actually can be extended into the car infotainment system and this is called as a projection mode. So the car electronics and the car infotainment system have evolved so much so that now it's called as a connected car. So when you have a car, at, when you're driving the car, recently I worked with universities as I was mentioning, I want to bring industry and academia together. We did a small project. Of course, it was less than 10,000 rupees cost where we wanted to demonstrate a connected car. What exactly was the use case? The use case was so that when you're driving in your car, you have some CCTV footage at home and you figure out that there is some intrusion, some burglar entering the home. So there is an alert shown in the car. So when you are driving the car, in the infotainment system, it says that there is some intrusion at home, do you want to look at what is happening there? So as soon as you say that, yes, I want to look what is happening there, it says if you are driving, one of the most important things to be taken care of in automotive is the safety part of it. Which means to say that uh, there should be no harm to the driver or the passengers using the vehicle. So it would say that, stop the car now, I will show you what is happening at home. So when you park the car, put it in the park mode, immediately it will say that the camera content is streamed on your dashboard. So that's a concrete car which we did demonstrated with the second year students of electronics within four weeks of time. That's a connected car concept I just wanted to explain. And we talk about uh, artificial intelligence in uh, automotive. What exactly it means? What exactly is intelligence, first of all? Intelligence means that I sense something, I think about that and take an action. So as a human, we know that if I, if I see a snake, I sense that there's danger. And I think that I have to escape from this situation. The action I do is I run away. So similarly, I'm just giving a parallel to what exactly happens in the automotive world. So our main, our sense organs as a human, we have intelligence, we sense something, we think about it and take an action. The equivalent has been achieved in the automotive world, where our sensors are cameras are our sensors, equivalent of our eyes. Then we have the microphones, which are equivalent of our ears. So whatever sense organs we have, of course, there's no uh, emotion yet in the vehicle. It's a good thing not to have emotion in the vehicle because 99% uh, of the accidents today happen due to the driver error, which means that though the driver wants to be safe, there is some probably, see, if, when I buy a new car, I have an emotional quotient. I don't want somebody else to overtake me. So in that rush, I may overtake and that may lead to accident. So one way in the artificial part, not to bring the emotional part in the electronics part, it's a good thing. So what exactly happens in the artificial intelligence in the vehicle is, in the next gen vehicles, you have the camera sensors, which are very basic, like a vision where you can pick up what's happening. There are other technologies called radar and leader. 
radar stands for radio detection ranging so what what a radar and lidar does is it emits the light or a radio, audio radio frequency figures out what's there next to you is there an object and it also draws the contour of the object is the object a human a cyclist a truck anything so this lidar radars are kind of our ears so and uh, there's one more thing called recam it's a it's called a fusion scenario where uh, today as humans what we do is uh, we listen to something we see something uh, together we come with a analysis link that oh this is a human this is a wildlife this is something else so we sense what's happening so this is a technology called recam it's a fusion where it's a fusion of radar and camera together so delphi has patented this so the automotive world is coming up with all possible sensor sensors to make it intelligent so the sensing part is done in the car it's in the uh, sensing part is done in the automotive so what exactly is the the ai part of it the processing of this data to figure out what the sensor data is what it uh, poses to the vehicle what are the pros and cons of this uh, whatever data it sends is the intelligence bit and the actions are typically we know that a lot of us use the cars now uh, which has like adas features adas means advanced driver assistance the level goes from 0 to 5 where level 0 is simple things like alerts when you don't put your seat belt there's alert that's a very basic alert to your driving capabilities and at as level 5 is when the car is totally autonomous which means that there's no driver in the vehicle and to the extent that there is no pedals and steering even if you want to take a intervene and take control of the vehicle it's not possible so that's that's called autonomous vehicles level 0 to 5 level 5 of adas is av so the actions possible are it could stop the vehicle it could alert you it could uh, maneuver it could just pull out to the side these are the actions to be taken so this concept is called drive by wire so we usually drive by steering later it can become as drive by wire so this is what i want to draw a parallel as to what artificial intelligence is in automotive world compared to a human life and of course uh, actually uh, tesla had planned to bring out robo taxis which is completely autonomous by 2020 but unfortunately covid hit us and it got delayed in the next 2 3 years the autonomous vehicle should be on road which means to say that you can just get into the car like we sit here together we sit in a conference room like thing and just mention our destination and this works well as of today to an extent in a structured traffic but there are a lot of countries where the traffic is not that structured so there's a lot more work to be done but there the future is autonomous vehicles where it will be driverless vehicles but is it everything ready already is it safe as of today no i talked about already all these things and one last point i want to touch upon is something called as augmented reality we all have heard about virtual reality virtual reality means there's nothing really there it's all virtual it's all imagination or content creation where you feel that you are in real world augmented reality is something in the automotive world where there's some part of real world some part of virtuality so it's called that's why it's called the augmented reality for example you have been here you mm-hmm. assume that you drove a car here with your personal profile in the car next time when i come back to cambridge it will say that you are here in uh, last time which month is this uh, in august of 2024 so you are here in a conference do you want to go visit again that's the kind of augmented reality what we talking about in the future all this is possible only because of artificial intelligence where you have a connected car you have a lot of data about your persona your driving ability as an individual who you are what are your preferences etc but the artificial intelligence is part which brings in all these capabilities i think i just talk about uh, a classic example is when you drive down your if i give a parallel to what we do in india when you are driving down in in gandhi bazar is one of the famous areas in our place called bangalore it would say you had a masala dosa here two months back do you want to drive back here so i can park you for here so that's a kind of augmented reality we are talking about so i'll keep it short this is what i want to talk about ai in automotive and uh, of course i'll be here till how it's a few more hours we can discuss offline as well Uh, thanks for this wonderful wonderful opportunity of course it's a privilege to be here presenting in the cambridge university thank you all